So uh, the next thing we're gonna be doing is our sandwich bread. Um, this one, I have said before, I do most doughs in my bread machine because I'm lazy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not lazy. Obviously, we do a lot around this house, and this is just one of the ways that I could speed it up and get it going. So I usually start this, and then I'll go about and do a bunch of other stuff, and then I come back. What I don't like is the way that this bakes the bread. So I still do that in my oven. I use this for kneading the ingredients and then doing the first rise for me, and it just saves me a lot of time. So the way with the bread machine, and I got this for $2 at a local thrift store. I see them all the time. Um, but what you're gonna do is you want the wet ingredients on the bottom. Sometimes you add the sugar and stuff there too. Then you want the flour. The basic thing is you want the yeast to be on the top and then it kind of pulls it down into it so the salt and the yeast don't get too close too quickly and that deactivates it. So what we're gonna start with is we have a quarter cup of warm milk going in. I just totally splashed on my face, awesome. I have one cup of uh, warm water. Four tablespoons of melted butter. You can use oil. I just find butter, butter just tastes a little bit better. So that's why we go with that route. I do have a sink of dishes over here going. Anytime I do my meal prep days, I just keep a warm sink of dishes and then I just kind of keep doing them every time I go near the sink. Just uh, a little bit easier for me to keep up with it with, with that way. With that way? That doesn't even make sense. Doing it that way. <laughs> I need two tablespoons of sugar. Like I said, a couple of the dry ingredients are gonna go in with the liquid, but that's just the way it is. Salt. It is one and a half teaspoons of salt. Then, that's our like base that we're gonna start with. On top of that, you can use all-purpose flour. I use bread flour. Um, I usually keep, I buy, you know, a couple bags at a time and I just throw them into um, a tub. If you're worried about it going bad, you can add some bay leaves to it. That keeps bugs away um, if that's a problem. We don't usually have that issue, but into it. Three. Okay. I keep these vintage cups in here because I think they're so easy and cute, but sometimes they're just kind of a pain, so. There's two. Three. And usually I will just use the measuring, the one measuring cup and guess, but because um, you guys are watching me, I'm gonna try to do it correctly. So we got a third a cup of flour in that one. So you kind of move your flour so that it's not mounted in the middle. Because it seems like naturally as you pour it, it kind of mounds. So I kind of make like a, just a little fish flour at the edge, make a little well in the middle. And then of course I threw my teaspoon into the sink. So now I have a wet teaspoon. Let me see, I gotta have a second one up here. And I do. So you can use one packet of yeast. I buy it in bulk at um, Costco or Sam's Club. I think it's Red Star. It's a huge container of it. I just bought one of these a long time ago and I keep reusing this in the fridge and then I freeze the rest of it and it's lasts me for a long time. So we're gonna do two uh, teaspoons and then a quarter teaspoon of yeast. Like I said, that's just gonna go on the top. Now, if you wanna do the bread in here, you totally can. I just don't love the, wine, the way mine bakes, but for two bucks, I can't complain. So I'm just gonna do, um, for mine, it's the setting number seven. I have a Breadman Plus from like, I believe it's from the 90s to be honest with you, but I don't really know. So I just set it to seven, hit start, and it already is doing its thing. So in, let's see. An hour and a half, it'll have finished its second rise, and then we're gonna go ahead and come back, and then I'll put it okay, in. Okay, we're on to our sandwich bread. It just came out, oh, look at that yeast bubble. Um, it just came out of the bread machine, and now I'm actually going to ham form it and cook it in a Pullman. You could use a glass baking dish as well, um, whatever you got. But all I'm gonna do is punch it down. Usually my mixer does this, but I was impatient and pulled it out like one minute early. But anyways, um, I put just a little bit of flour on our cutting board and that out of there. So I just put a little flour in my hands, but basically all you're gonna try to do is roll it into like a log. It 
Doesn't have to be pretty, it just gotta taste good. <clears throat> so all I'm gonna do is drop it down in there. And now I'm just gonna do our second rise. So there it is now. I'm gonna do our second rise um, in the pan. So I'm just gonna cover it with a towel, stick it to the side for about one hour-ish, um, and then we'll pop it in the oven to bake. So that's our sandwich bread for the week. All right, our bread is done. As soon as it comes out of the oven, that puffed up like crazy. <laughs> I like to brush up a little bit of, but bit of butter. That's kind of hard to say. Um, I, it's just to be pretty. Um, this is not a necessary step at all, but who doesn't like a little extra butter in their lives? Well, most people, it's not always the best for you, but there's our beautiful look. Now the hardest part with this one, you have to wait two to three hours to cut it. If you cut it earlier than that one, it's not fully cool. It really messes up the whole loaf. So we're just gonna let it chill. I've done it before and every time after it always the patience. There's, you gotta work on it, but it's, it's worth it when you get to cut this beautiful loaf. Look at that thing. Same time, our water's finally boiling. It took forever. Um, so I'm gonna drop our jars into the pan. Have a lifter. It's the easiest way to get it in and out, but not necessary. They sell them everywhere. So our jars are going to go straight in. Like I said earlier, you just want the water to cover them at least two inches, um, cover the top. And then the lids are just finger tight. They are not overly tightened on there. You just do it kind of enough. You don't have to keep twisting like you would if you rolled it really tight. You just put them on there, fingertip tight, and then that's it. So those are in. Put our lid back on. And this is my pressure canner. I just don't put the gauge on it or tighten the lid down. I use it as a water bath um, canner. You can, like I said, use any pot as long as it covers the top. We're gonna set our timer on these for 25 minutes and then those will be done. And then I think our marathon of cooking is just about over. <laughs>